Hi, Bobcats. In this video, we're going to apply what we've already learned about equilibria and acids and bases to some new situations. We're going to look at acid and base buffers, titrations, and then also solubility. We have a long list of learning goals for this chapter as we're going to look at buffers, uh, finding the pH of a buffer, uh, titrations, we're going to be looking at the pH titration curves, uh, strong acids as well as weak acids, and um, then with solubilities, we're going to have something called the solubility product constant, and yes, last not the le but not least, we're also going to take a look at uh, complex ion formation. Before we jump into all of that, there are a couple of topics from Gen Chem 1 that we need to review. And if you don't remember these from Gen Chem 1, this is a great time to learn them. Um, the first of these topics is dilution. The main idea behind the dilution equation is that the moles of solute that you have before you do the dilution are equal to the moles of solute that are present after the dilution. If we're talking about a solution, the moles of solute are given by the molarity times the volume. And so that's where we get M1V1 equals M2V2. All it's doing is saying the moles we have before we dilute are equal to the moles that we have after we dilute. Remember, in that whole process of dilution, what we're doing is adding a solvent. So the moles of solute are the same, but we have added more solvent, which increases the volume. And with the problems that we'll be working in this chapter, we're going to often be mixing solutions. When we do titrations, we're going to be adding titrant to our analyte, and the resulting solution down in the Erlenmeyer flask will have increased in volume. Um, in the case of the solubility problems that we're going to do, we might mix two solutions together and then predict whether or not a uh, precipitate will form. And so um, when this happens, we'll, what we'll do is say that that second volume will be equal to the total volume as the two solutions are mixed. That's not necessarily a great assumption to make in all cases, but we'll generally be working with dilute aqueous solutions. And for dilute solutions, that's a pretty good assumption. As an example, let's try this problem. It says to find the concentration of NaCl in the resulting solution if 25 mils of 0.1 molar sodium chloride are combined with 25 mils of 0.1 molar potassium iodide. Okay, so we've got 25 mils of two separate solutions that get mixed together. We are going to assume in this process, let's see, let's get the pen going. We're going to assume that after we mix these two solutions, our um, V2 will be equal to 25 plus 25, or 50 milliliters. And uh, keep in mind, those still have two more sig figs attached to them for, for four sig figs total. And let's see, our M1 will be... Uh, the 0 0.1 molar NaCl. Our V1 will be the 25 mils. Our M2 is what we're trying to find. And our V2 was what you got by mixing the two solutions, or 50 milliliters. Now our dilution equation says M1V1 is equal to M2V2. If we rearrange this equation to solve for M2, well, we'd need to divide both sides by V2. So M2 will be equal to M1V1 divided by V2. So we can now plug our numbers in. For M1, we have 0.1 molar. For V1, we have 25 molar. And for V2, we have 50 molar. Notice molarities cancel out. Oh, whoops. No, they don't, because down there in the bottom, that's not molar, it's milliliters. 
Okay, so molar stays, milliliters cancel out. There we go. And so we basically have 0.1 times 25 divided by 50, which should work out to give us 0 0.0500 molar. Another way you could think of this problem, and this kind of thing does happen fairly often, is we doubled the volume. The volume went from 25 milliliters of salt to 50 mils in our combined solution. If you double the volume, you're going to cut the concentration in half. So let's take a look at the math that's behind the uh, finding the equivalence point in an acid-base neutralization reaction. That's going to be fundamental to our study of titrations. So um, an example of an acid-base neutralization reaction is right here. We have phosphoric acid reacting with barium hydroxide to give us barium phosphate and waters. I very often will write the water um, when I do a reaction like this. Let's change color here. Um, I'll very often write the water. And, well, that did not change color. Let's try again. Um, I prefer to write the water is HOH, um, and so this would have six of them. That just makes balancing a little bit easier. We can think of this as being a double displacement reaction where the hydroxide ions pair up with the hydrogen ions and the barium ions pair up with the phosphate ions. Okay, so one way to approach solving these problems is by doing a standard stoichiometry calculation. And um, our department is very uh, divided and very diverse in how we teach um, finding the equivalence point in a problem like this. Some, some of our instructors um, just uh, go wholehearted on the stoichiometry version. Um, I actually prefer doing a different approach because the chemists that I know who do titrations for a living think about titrations in terms of equivalence. And equivalents are defined as one mole of the active ingredient in whatever you're titrating. So in an acid, it would be one mole of hydrogen ions. And in a base, it would be one mole of hydroxide ions. And uh, the whole idea would be that at your equivalence point, the moles of OH minus have to be equal to the moles of OH plus. And so when, when you think about that as, you know, at your equivalence point, moles equal moles, um, equivalents are a natural way of, of thinking about this. Okay, so um, yes, this is the approach that I prefer to take. If you haven't seen this approach, um, I strongly suggest you at least think about this because this is how I'm going to work all of our example problems. Um, so again, the whole idea here is that the moles of H plus are equal to the moles of OH minus. When you have a solution, you get moles of your solute by taking molarity times volume. But with something like phosphoric acid, you're going to get, um, for every one mole of H3PO4, you're going to get three moles of H plus, right? The H plus, the thing that we're interested in, is a piece of the whole acid, and you tend to get three of those from phosphoric acid. In the case of barium hydroxide, you're going to get two hydroxides from every one barium hydroxide formula unit. So when we go to calculate the moles of just H plus or the moles of just OH minus, we need an extra factor that's equal to the subscript on those ions in the formula. So we're going to add in here N sub A, which is simply the subscript on hydrogen in uh, the formula times the moles of acid, I'm sorry, the molarity of acid times the volume of acid. And that will be equal to N sub B, which is that subscript on hydroxide in the formula of your base, times the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. So that real key here is that N sub A and that N sub B. Those are the subscripts in the formulas. And I want to point out this is most definitely not the dilution equation. If you simply use the dilution equation and leave out the um, subscripts, you're going to get the wrong answer. And in fact, I just 
took to calling this the titration equation um, to, to help distinguish that this is something different. The titration equation and the dilution equation are two different equations. They're both based on the idea that moles in a solution equal moles in a solution, but the moles of what are different in these two equations. All right, so let's take a look at this one. How many milliliters of 0.1 molar barium hydroxide are needed to titrate 25 milliliters of 0.0875 molar phosphoric acid? Okay, so this is a titration. We're trying to find how many milliliters of base are needed to reach the equivalence point of this uh, titration. And so we're going to use the titration equation. And the titration equation tells us that the subscript on hydrogen times the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid will be equal to the subscript on hydroxide times the molarity of the base and the volume of the base. Whoops, that should be a B, not an A. And what it is that we're looking for is that volume of the base. So I'm going to just do a little algebra here. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by N sub B and M sub B. And I'm going to flip it left to right so that I have the volume of the base all by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. So that'll give me N sub A times M sub A times V sub A, all divided by N sub B and M sub B. Okay, so what is N sub A? N sub A is the three on hydrogen in our formula. N sub B is the two on hydroxide in our formula. All right, so let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. N sub A was three. And down in the denominator, N sub B was two. The molarity of the acid, well, it was given as point 0.0875 molar, and the volume of the acid was 25 milliliters. And I left out a unit here, that's 0.0875 molar. And then for M sub B, we've got 0.1. All right, molarity cancels between the top and the bottom. The only unit we're left with is milliliters, which is good since we were asked to find a volume. So now I'm going to take 3 times 0 0.0875 times 25 divided by 2 and divided by 0.1, which is going to give us a volume of 32.8125 milliliters. And it looks like we can keep about, oh, three significant figures uh, because of our uh, molarities. So that'll work out to be 32.8 milliliters. Now, when you're in lab, most titrations are done with burettes that read to two decimal places. So if you're actually doing this in lab, you would record one more decimal place beyond. Okay, I think that knocks it out for uh, this review material before we jump into the new stuff in uh, chapter 17. So please keep in mind we've got two separate equations to use here. If it's a dilution, because either we're adding solvent or we're simply mixing two solutions, uh, we use M1V1 equals M2V2. But if it's a titration and we're looking for that equivalence point in the titration, we're going to use N sub A, M sub A, V sub A is equal to N sub B, M sub B, V sub B.